Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be working on this Xbox Series X. I originally worked on this last Friday, or Friday gone rather. I worked on it on a live stream and somehow I managed to get this to power on. I still don't know how. It's Sunday today and this is ready to go back out to the customer, or at least I thought it was. Before I send them all back out to the customer, I test all of the critical components to make sure that the console is fully operational. And unfortunately, with this one, the disk drive is taking a disk, but it's not spinning. So I thought I'd do a quick update video and try and repair the disk drive. It does accept an update, and the reason that I mention that is because the console needs a disk drive to be able to accept the update. It doesn't need the disk drive to actually work, it just needs the disk drive to be present. So I know it's the correct disk drive daughter board, but there's something wrong with the motor that spins the disk. Or something wrong on the PCB. I don't know yet, I haven't had a look. But, that being said, my name's Dakota, I'm an electronic technician. I mainly work on games consoles, but I do work on other stuff too. So if that's the sort of stuff you're into, be sure to get subscribed and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. If you do want to organise repair, you can go to the code.repair, you can either request a quote, or you can book it in directly and send it over, and I'll do my best to help out. You can also support me on Twitch, you can follow me on Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch, and then subscribing to my Twitch channel, absolutely free, I do live stream over there, and it does massively help out the channel, although it doesn't cost you anything if you've already got an active Amazon Prime account. So with that being said, let's get into today's repair. This video probably still would have been here without today's sponsor, but hey, it's time to show something, right? So here goes. Here at the Coder Productions, we love nothing more than to take as much money from you, the viewer, as we possibly can, which is why we're proud to talk to you about ConsoleFix.shop, a great place for you to spend your hard-earned cash. I mean, yeah, fair enough, you get parts and supplies that help you fix things, but you've got to give me some money in return. Nothing in life's free, and if you pay me for it, you might appreciate it more. Or not, hey, I'm not judging. With that being said, we do have some pretty cool stuff on the shelves, including power supplies, HDMI ports, charging chips, MOSFETs, and whatever else you can think of that'll give you the illusion that you're getting a good deal. So head on over to the online store by clicking on the link in the video description, and if there's one thing I can guarantee, is that there will be a way for me to take your money. Console Fix, your friendly money grabbing YouTuber. Right, so as you can see, the console is turning on. I still don't know what I did to this to get it working the first time. But if we pop a disc in, you'll hear that it's not spinning a disc. The laser is moving around, but the disc just isn't spinning up. And that's a problem, because obviously that's basically a Series S. So as you can see here on the dashboard, it is not taking a disc in whatsoever. And it's also not accepting it in the queue as well, so that is a big problem. So I've already taken the screw out of here and here. I was going to just do this off camera, but I thought, you know what? I might as well make a video. So in terms of the actual console, I have already serviced this, and it's ready to go, other than the fact that the disk drive isn't spinning a disk. So we're going to pop this out. It's relatively straightforward to do this. It's not difficult. Well, I'll say it's not difficult, that's, uh, you know, user-dependent, of course. I've seen people mess these up. So, let's just have a look. So, we take the bottom cover off, we take this screw out of here, and we take this screw out of the side as well. And then this cover just pops up like so. As you can see, the cables are incorrectly. And this has been marked P2 and P5. That's interesting. So I think someone's probably put a scrap disk drive in this when they've sent it to my customer. So the backstory behind this is the fact that the customer bought it. He lives in Belgium. The customer bought it off eBay, sent it directly to me because it was a UK listing. And when I got it, it had no power. I managed to get it to turn on, literally just by disassembling it and reassembling it, and yeah, the disk drive does accept an update, but let's see if anyone's actually ever changed this disk drive. And no, the solder actually does look fresh, which is quite interesting. So, there's two wires here, and these wires are connected to this motor here, but to get this board out, 
we need to actually desolder these wires. So it's not something everyone can do because not everyone's got a destroy, uh, soldering iron. So if you do need this service, I can offer it. It's, it is a service that I do for customers. But we just unplug all of the ribbons. So there's one down here as well. And then we've got three screws here. We've got one just here. So we'll take that screw out. There's one just up here on the left hand side, right by the wires. And there's one just here as well. There we go. Perfect. So that will come out now, but we do need to desolder this. So we're going to add a teeny amount of flux. We don't want this flux to go everywhere. And then I'm going to replace this solder with leaded solder. There we go. Beautiful. And now I can desolder these wires. One's actually already desoldered. There we go. So these are these are actually marked up. So we've got B there, which indicates that this is the black wire, as that's for ground. And then we've got R there, which indicates the red wire. So it's important that you get these correct because if you get these incorrect, it will basically reverse the polarity and it will try and push a disc out when you insert the disc and it will try and take a disc in when you try and eject a disc. So it's very important that you get those two wires absolutely correct and don't reverse the polarity. It wouldn't damage the console, but you wouldn't get a disc in and out, let's put it that way. So if we remove that board, there we go, beautiful. So here I have a donor disk drive and I'm just going to remove this motor from here. I will say that you don't have to remove this board. You can, you can do this without, but if you're just changing the disk drive on its own, then obviously you need to desolder the wire. But you can do this part, but just by pushing it out of the way. So we've got the motor here, so that's the assembly that we need. We can obviously replace just this part here, but we may as well replace it all. So we're going to move that out of the way. This is a donor one out of the donor disk drive. So if we remove the one out of the disk drive we're working with. Now I'm not going to say for sure that this is a motor issue. It could be a board issue. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I don't want to do any micro soldering on the PCB until I know for sure that it's not a mechanical issue. So we'll remove that one out of the way. And then we're going to drop this one into here. And there we go. That motor has now been replaced. The laser assembly still moves freely. So now let's pop this back together. Make sure that sits under the groove. There we go. And now I'm going to solder these wires back on. I do have a little bit of flux on there already, so I don't need to add no more. And there we go. Beautiful. So that's all back together. Just going to put the top back on this. Um, of course, we shouldn't have any screws left over. That's good. We do have some screws from the other console, though, so I'll put those to one side. We've got a bunch of screws. So this is how many screws you have to take out just to get to that motor assembly. It's quite ridiculous. All of those just to get to a motor. They don't make it very repairable, do they? Okay, so we'll pop the disk drive back in. 
make sure it's plugged in and we're also going to secure it down and before we reassemble this fully we do need to give it a test so let's pair it on and let's insert a disc And unfortunately, it is still not spinning up. Unfortunately, that means that the issue isn't related to the motor itself. It's likely related to either the PCB for the disk drive or the main board itself. Let's dig deeper. So as you can see, it's still not on the dashboard and saying that it's installing. So yeah, we're going to have to dig a little bit deeper. So what I'd like to do now then is just test the daughter board and just see if that's the issue. And the fastest way to do that is just to swap this daughter board out. You can't swap it out without replacing this chip. So I would have to take this chip and put it onto a new daughter board. But I can at least see if it attempts to spin a disc and it should give me a warning on the screen if it's related to this daughter board here. Remove the customer's daughter board, keep that safe do not lose it and I'm going to use one of my own donut daughter boards from a console that couldn't be fixed and I'll just pop a couple of screws in here just to secure it down it doesn't need all of them I'll pop one in these two corners and then we can test it again so for this now I don't need to secure anything down because the disc is still in there so if it works it should just spin straight back up and unfortunately it's not spinning with another daughter board so now I'm gonna to have to take out the main motherboard itself which is rather annoying it could be one of these cables here though so it could be either the power cable or the SATA cable so I'm gonna pop that out of there it is pretty difficult to be able to get those out and in it's kind of fiddly without taking the actual console apart but I'll do my best so I do have some spare cables I am going to need to just move the disk drive itself out of the way though I'm going to try the SATA cable first So if the disk drive isn't communicating with the console, it might not spin up. So I'll just try replacing the SATA cable. If that don't work, I'll try replacing the power cable. And this is pretty much just trial and error at this point. We are entering the unknown now. But unfortunately that is still not spinning up so we're going to have to try something else and that's going to be the power cable so the power cable itself has got multiple cables on it and if one of those are damaged for some reason obviously it's not going to work so we'll just try a different power cable just in case we've got a broken wire there somewhere it is easier just to try a different power cable rather than doing continuity checks on each of the cables That one's a lot more fiddly to get in and out without taking the console apart fully. And the console may shut down now as well. Because they don't like being hot swapped. It actually powered on. Sadly not. It's not even the power cables. Well that's unfortunate. So the next step for me is going to be to try a complete untouched disk drive, which I haven't removed anything from. So this is a replacement disk drive. The only reason I'm trying this is because 
it could be that something got damaged during the repair it's always a possibility okay that one's spinning up Let's just shut this down. I'm going to pop the customer's daughter board into here. And I guess I'll just try replacing the entire disk drive. It could be that the entire disk drive is faulty. Or it could be that the daughter board I'm using has got a dodgy daughter board as well. You know, there could be anything. So it's probably easier at this point. Now I know that this disk drive 100% works. It's easier for me to just put the customer's daughter board into this disk drive. And that there is the customer's daughter board as well. Not the one that's in the console. So I'll get rid of my donut daughter board. And this, like I said, belongs to the customer, this daughter board right here. So I'm going to use this. Just solder that on there. Make sure that's all connected. And there we go. So this disk drive is now paired with the customer's console. Let's give that a test. Hopefully there's nothing wrong with the customer's daughter board. Fingers crossed. There we go, beautiful. Now that is actually spinning. And there we go, that has accepted the disc. So as you can see there, that is now installing and it's in the queue, beautiful. So this console is now fully working. All that's left to do with this is just to put it back together and put it through its paces. I did play some fort shite on it a couple of days ago, so it should be absolutely fine. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. If you do have any comments or questions, I'm always happy to read them. I do read all comments, but I don't always reply to them. I don't always have time. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And if I've got time or if I think it wants a reply, then I'll reply. You can organise a repair at the codeout.repair if you do need this or any other repair. Or you can get in touch on the website as well. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications and give the video a thumbs up before you leave. And check out what's on the screen right now to see another video which you might be interested in. Thank you very much and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.